I'm Rear Admiral Thomas M. Dykus, retired. The files of the submarine force are filled with true stories of our major underseas battle with Japanese during World War II. The sinking of aircraft carriers, the duels between our submarines and enemy anti-submarine vessels. But very often the patrol that stands out in a submariner's mind has nothing to do with the amount of ships torpedoed or depth charges endured. This is the story of the patrol that for a number of reasons Commander Edward E. Shelby will never forget. The patrol of the USS Sunfish in the Sea of Akhats. On 22 June 1944, the Sunfish departed Pearl Harbor after a major overhaul, which included repairs for battle damage incurred during her last patrol. This was number seven. Oh, we've drawn the O Coat Sea this trip, gentlemen. Well, my blood's a little thin for a place like that right now. It's supposed to be the coldest spot in the world, isn't it? Well, we'll see what we can do to fatten up that blood before we get there. No sympathy, Paul. You should have gone into carriers. Uh -huh. Now, most of the traffic has been reported north of and coming through the Oney Coton Strait. We'll make a run through it and see what we can pick up at the mouth of the strait. Oh, incidentally, and this is important, we'll be crossing lanes being used by the Russians. So before we attack anything, positive identification must be made. Clear? Yes, yes sir. Why don't you fire that tube? Now, if this area proves unproductive, We'll come through here. At Pearl Harbor, Sunfish had been assigned 28 new men, and now it was up to Captain Shelby to take these individuals and knit them into an efficient submarine crew. Constant drills were held, and no one but the captain and his executive officer, <coughs> Lieutenant Paul Mansell, knew when an alarm would sound. Surfacing. Gun action. Target practice. Diving drills, especially diving drills, the submarine's primary maneuver. Battle stations to ready their deadly weapons. For simulated torpedo approach and firing. It was a common sight to find Captain Shelby at any hour of the day or night on a tour of inspection. The big mistakes were obvious, easy to fix. It was the little things he looked for, the tiny errors that in combat might easily mean the difference between life and death for the Sunfish and her crew. The day finally came when the captain knew he had welded his crew into as efficient and combat ready a team as any in the submarine force. On July the 3rd, the Sunfish entered her assigned area, the Arcot Sea. She was ready for action. But in making her ready, the captain had driven himself harder than any of his crew. The men of the Sunfish, once their duties were over, could sleep, but the skipper was constantly on tap. As a result, the amount of sleep Captain Shelby had gotten since leaving Pearl Harbor could have been measured on a stopwatch. Why don't you get some sleep, Captain? You look beat. Yes, I think I will, Paul. I can hardly keep my eyes open. Watch the door. Bridge, radar, contact bearing 014. Range, 7,000 yards. Radar, what do you make her? It? It's a small pip, Captain. From the way she's tracking, I guess it was a patrol boat. Makes sense. But we're sitting right in the middle of the strait. Come to course, 285. All ahead, one-third. Come to course, 285. All ahead, one-third. We'll try to go around them. Stay close to the shoreline. Post extra lookouts. Aye, aye, Captain. Looks like I won't get that nap after all. Hugging the coastline, Sunfish crept undetected past the enemy patrol boat. Beta, what have you got? Not a pip, Captain. That boat's out of range. Bring a right to 010. All ahead, standard. Bring a right to 010. All ahead, standard. Take the con, Paul. 
This may be sack time. Aye, aye, Captain. Good luck. the con, Paul. Torpedo wake off starboard bow. Crossing ahead. All back emergency. All back emergency. Wake off port bow. Left full rudder. All ahead, Paul. Wake off the port B. Starboard back full. Port ahead flank. Wake dead ahead. Port back full. Starboard. Belay that. All ahead two thirds. Take the con, Paul. I'm going to bed. Aye, aye, Captain. See you. For a while, it looked as though the skipper might make it. But Sleep and Captain Shelby were going to be strangers for some time to come. Captain of the conning tower, periscope contact. What do you got, Paul? Just mass and smoke. Two ships. Looks like they're pretty close to the beach. Have you tracked him? Oh, they stopped or anchored. Mm. How do you head? 036. Come right to 096. We'll close and identify him. All ahead, two thirds. Come right to 096. All ahead, two thirds. The water's pretty shallow in there, Captain. We'll go in on the surface. Sound battle stations. I'll be on the bridge. Aye, aye, sir. Battle stations, torpedo. Take him out yet, Captain? Not yet. I'm steering between them so we can swing to either side if we have to. Fathometer set up yet? Yes, sir. When we get into 15 fathoms, the operator will give us any change of a fathom or more. Very well. Make ready all tubes forward. Set depth 10 feet. Ready all forward tubes. Set depth 10 feet. Baker, keep the ranges coming. Aye, aye. They're running up a flag. It's Russian. Range, 5,000 yards. Come right to 100. Come right to 100. No sign yet. Quartermaster, man the searchlight. Aye, aye, sir. 15 fathoms. 15 fathoms. Very well. Make this to target dead ahead. AA. Okay, target dead ahead. Aye, aye, sir. Range, 4200. Nothing yet. She hasn't answered the challenge. Can't shoot till we make sure. Unwilling to fire until positive identification had been made, Captain Shelby closed the target. As the water grew shallower and nerves drew tighter. Something's going on. 14 fathoms, 14 fathoms, range 1500. Now the other ship's running up a flag. It's Japanese. Fire one. Cast under. Set torpedo depth six feet. Range 1100. Torpedo depth set six feet. Fire two. 13 fathoms, 13 fathoms. Left full rudder. Left full rudder. Under again. 
Keep her coming around. Keep her coming around. Aye, aye, sir. Rudder is left full. The sunfish made a complete circle and headed again for the still untouched target. We'll sink her if I have to send over a boarding party and scuttler. Set torpedo depth, zero feet. Steady on course, one zero zero. Range? Steady on one zero zero. Range, one one double zero. Fire three. Looks good. Mm. So did the others. About time. Left full rudder. All ahead, one third. Left full rudder. All ahead, one third. Oh. Yes, I know. I hope you make it this time, Captain. Captain Shelby finally made it. He was asleep the second his head hit the pillow. It lasted for all of five minutes. Hilton, we run aground? No, sir. There's nothing up here. What happened? I don't know, unless we hit a reef or a mine. All compartments check for damage. Sound, radar. You got anything? Nothing on sound, sir. Not a pip, Captain. Well, I might have dreamed it. But the rest of you were awake. That was no dream, Captain. All compartments report. No damage, sir. Oh, that's a relief. Whatever it was. Check all compartments for damage. All ahead flank. Whatever it is, let's get away from it. Yes, sir. At flank speed, Sunfish raced from the area. While a skipper and exec prowled the ship searching for any damage that might have been caused by the mysterious beating they were taking. Gradually, the shaking grew less frequent and less violent. Well, it's two hours since the last one. Looks like we might be out of it. Yeah, but what was it? Nobody aboard's ever been through anything like it before. Yeah, I've been thinking, Paul. There's only one thing it could have been. That's an undersea earthquake. Earthquake? Yeah, it doesn't show on the charts, but I've read somewhere that this is a quake area. It doesn't happen very often. Just often enough to keep you out of bed, huh? Suppose it's a plot? Seals, patrol boats, earthquakes. Bo, do you think I'll ever get a night's sleep? Captain, I know what. Why don't you try it again? We could stop all engines so it'll be quiet for you. <laughs> I don't think it'll help. It might. After all, nothing else can happen. You want to bet? Turn him over again. It's too quiet. I won't be able to sleep. Turn him over again. Aye, aye, sir. of his ship's engines in his ears, Captain Shelby slept for longer than he had been able to in days. Twenty minutes. Captain? Captain? Uh, Captain. <clears throat> Sorry, Captain, but uh, Mr. Mansell said that you'd want to be awakened. It's all right, Ted. What is it? We just got a message from the Sand Shark. She's over in Area Baker, isn't she? Yes, sir. She spotted a convoy headed this way. 
Destroyers had her pinned down, though, until they got away. According to the plot, they could be in this area. I'll be right up, Ted. We'll run on the surface. Anything? No sign yet, Captain. I'll be on the bridge. Aye, aye, sir. of the night, Sunfish's antenna probed continuously for some sign of the enemy convoy. At 0936, the search was still going on. Bridge, radar contact, bearing 310 through, range 15,000 yards. Hey, Ralph, come right to 310, all ahead flank. Come right to 310, all ahead flank. Station the tracking party. Station the tracking party. Aye, aye, sir. With all the power her four diesel engines could provide, Sunfish closed the target. Getting five pips, range 11,000 yards. Very well. Base course 120, speed about 11 knots. Come right to 090. Come right to 090, aye. We'll open our range. See if we can't get in a better position ahead of them. For the moment, Captain Shelby had no need for sleep. His hunter's faculties were sharpened by the scent of action. Three good-sized freighters, loaded. They're really deep in the water. Destroyer escort out ahead. Set torpedo depth 12 feet. Set torpedo depth 12 feet. They're zigging to the left. If they stay to the same zig plan, they'll swing again right in just two minutes. We'll fire a spread of three at the first one, then a second three at the end man. Right on schedule. Here they come. Down scope! Shadows match, sir. Stand by bow tubes. This is a shooting observation. Up scope. Stand by the valve tubes. Shooting observation. Shoot! Fire one. Fire two. Fire three. Shoot target. Bearing. Mark. Zero one five. Range. Mark. Two seven double O. Set. Shoot! Fire four. Fire five. Fire six. Time to first target. Twelve seconds. No sleep yet. Spotted us. Take her down deep. Emergency. Rig for depth charge. Rig for silent running. Take her deep. Emergency. Rig for depth charge. Rig for silent running. Hit. I'm getting breaking up noises, Captain. 
Time to second target. Five seconds. Four. Hit. Another one. Two out of three, not bad. High speed screws closing fast. Here we go. Screws passing overhead. Marcus, report. Depth 400 feet. Can you hold her? I think so, Captain, but she's awful heavy. Well, do the best you can. If you need more speed, let me know. Aye, aye, sir. We're starting another run, shifting to short scale. They've really got a bead on us. You think they're mad, Captain? The screws passing overhead. For two solid hours, Sunfish took a sustained beating. By all odds, she should have been sunk, but she held together. It looks like they might have lost us. Come up to periscope depth and take a look around. Bring her up to... Sound detection was excellent. For the next two and a half hours, the murderous beating went on. It was one of the most severe of the war. The sunfish taking 186 depth charges, 86 of them close aboard. Finally, at 1515. What do you got, son? Not a thing, Captain. Well, we can't sit here forever. Bring her up to periscope depth. Bring her up to periscope depth. battery charge, Captain. Boat's pretty well cleaned up, too. We can start all over again. We can, Mr. Mansell. But I have a better idea. Sir? Bear the bridge. Dive, dive. <laughs> well, I gotta get one good night's sleep or I'm gonna come apart at the seams. Yes, sir. Hilton, take her to 250 feet. 250 feet. Aye, aye, sir. Look, don't call me. I'll call you. And so Captain Ed Shelby finally got a well-earned full night's sleep, 250 feet deep in the Akhat Sea. Like the sunfish, his batteries needed recharging in order for him to continue the war the next morning. I'll be back in a moment with our special guest. Now I'd like you to meet Commander Paul Mansell, executive officer of the Sunfish during her seventh patrol. Paul, I suppose every submarine skipper's done what Ed Shelby finally did, taking his boat down into the quiet depths to get a little rest. How did he manage to go so long without sleep? For one thing, Admiral, we were all younger then. And for another, well, there wasn't much else he could do. I guess not, but I don't suppose either he or you will ever forget that patrol. Not a chance. That area is the most fantastic in the world. Sounds like never a dull moment. Never. Once we started rescue operations, we'd spotted a man in the water, except that it turned out to be an octopus on a log. Then for a while, we had a rash of enemy periscope sightings. They turned out to be sea parrots. With their red heads and yellow rings around their eyes, they do look like periscopes. And for really mixed emotions, wait till you have a lookout scream in your ear. Mines right under the bow. What were they? Dragon nets. They're jellyfish about three or four feet in diameter and a nice rusty color. They look exactly like mines. Compared to what you went through, a straight shooting patrol was a restful vacation. This was a rough one, all right. Paul, thank you for being with us and helping us to tell this story. Thank you, Admiral. Be with us again when we bring you another true story of the silent service.
Dios. 